So uh, I'll start with uh, the analytics platform that we have. So we had a very great session yesterday on why we need analytics. So we, so from Forrester presentation yesterday by Mike, you might have got a very brief understanding of why we need analytics. For example, to reduce cost, increase revenue, provide, improve the customer satisfaction, and provide process, improve process efficiency. So you have to be efficient. So just being efficient right now is not going to work. So it have to be efficient throughout. So tracking the progress over time is also very much important. And whenever there is an issue or an opportunity, we have to act immediately and get the maximum out of it. And further, we should be also able to predict the future and see what we can do and uh, understand the future opportunities and threats and act upon it. So we have built an amazing platform. We call it as the data analytics platform. The whole of these things is also in a single server called the DAS, WSO2 DAS, Data Analytics Server. So it has the capability of collecting from various event sources, analyzing them on real time, interactive, predictive, and with batch analytics, and communicating that results in effective ways like alerts, by querying on interactively, visualization, and through APIs. So first, we'll look at how we can collect data in different form. So now, all of, all of the transactions, all of the processors in your organization, everything is digitalized. Nobody writes in papers, and, like, papers anymore. We don't fax anymore. So all the transactions and all the business processes are now digitalized. And with the IoT, now we have lots of ways of getting data within the organization. So it may be like there are heterogeneous systems where we can get data from SOAP, HTTP, JMS, so like even email, SMS, Kafka, uh, WebSocket, MQTT. So we have lots of sources. These are like by default. We support all of these stuff. And this is extendable. It's like if you have your proprietary protocol, of course, you can write an adapter and plug that in. So apart from that, we also have all WSO2 products pushing data into DAS for the data analytics platform through thrift and binary protocol. If you really need very high efficiency, you can also write your own adapters. For Java systems, we have JMS monitors and log publishers. So we have lots and lots of stuff to get data into your system. And even if you want to monitor the social media, so we have hundreds of connectors with ESB, like Twitter, Facebook, so on and so forth, so you can monitor them as well. So it is very powerful when it comes to collecting data. So after collecting data, what we have to do is the main purpose is storing data. So with the new data analytics server and the analytics platform, we have an abstraction layer. So we are not going to just give you the database as it is. So the Cassandra, RDBMS, or HBase, we have several options to store it. And we provide an abstraction layer. So on top of that, you can build your own applications without, no, like, without the underlying, uh, without relying on the underlying uh, infrastructure. The key capability of this is like, OK, you are a new organization. You are just starting with analytics. You don't have much data to analyze. So you might start with RDBMS. We might just put data into RDBMS. Eventually, your analyzi analyzing skills are improving. Your needs are improving. Like You need more and more analytics and more and more data coming into your system. So at that point, you might have to scale it. And you might have to decide, like you might decide, I want to go to HBase. So now you do a data migration to HBase, but you can't change all your systems and all the other parts that is already working with the RDBMS solution. So this will give you a common API to work on so that you can scale your organization and need eventually when you need like more and more scalability. So after collecting and storing all the data, now I should be able to analyze that. So there are multiple forms of analyzing. So first form is like interactively analyzing the data. So this is very, very important to identify what happened and why it happened. For example, if we take a transaction, so I just want to go like here is a simple um, uh, query. That's like how you write it. So I just want to see what are the errors that happened yesterday. So I just put, put a, a date range and type search for errors. Okay. I, I was able to see, okay, there was a John who was trying to access something, and there was an error. Okay, so there was an error. So I, I'll take the transaction ID, and then I search through the transaction ID. So it says he has entered wrong username or password. 
that's why it's false so okay now I, I know why why it happened so I again search for his name like whether he has done any other transaction and there's another transaction afterwards which he has actually succeeded so this is the root cause analysis like why these things happened when ha when it's like these are not like predefined queries like these things just comes into your mind you, you know you 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 come up with the sequences of how you want to analyze it and you immediately analyze so this is powered by the WSO2 uh, analytics server through the interactive analytics so we give on-demand um, analytics with full text search support it also gives you deep analytics so like drill downs and it also distributes uh, well on uh, it uses uh, Lucene and it provides near real time and for indexing and data retrieval so now we have the capability of understanding what happened and why it happened through processing but that is not only enough so the next level of that is okay I want to summarize the results that what happened in the past and that is just summarizing the results is not enough we have to summarize throughout the time and see like okay last last year how it what was my revenue this year what was what was my revenue and how is it improving decreasing so on and so forth so this is what we like present it to the manager so that's we, I think we all do this these days so for this we have Apache Spark which is like 30% faster than the earlier solution which is Hadoop based and it is optimized on in-memory processing we give you an SQL like query language which is uh, very easy to write and process and here you can also schedule the scripts to run every day or every hour or you can use very complex uh, cron operations so with the spark based solution with batch analytics now we have a very good understanding of a summarized like what happened in the past and if you if you see something is not not there yet then you can even go and uh, analyze deep with interactive analytics so we have covered the past so the second the third one is doing it in real time so when when there is things happening we have to understand them and act immediately so that is the most important part in the current time so this is where currently most in organizations are investing in so WSO2, WSO2 analytics server provides a streaming complex event processing support with WSO2 CD engine which has the capability of processing more than 100k events per second over the network and it also comes with a very uh, SQL like query language so you can it's pretty easy for you to write so for example uh, we don't um, do spark streaming like this is not micro batching this is streaming like per event based processing for the most important part is like for example if you take an uh, so if if you want to identify a simple credit card fraud uh, example case may be like okay uh, use somebody stole your credit card first you go and like he, he, go, he goes to a grocery, gro grocery store and he tries that if it works then he do a huge purchase throw that card away and go so if that is a common case like a small transaction followed by a huge transaction within a day it may be a fraud so then the bank calls you and asks you okay uh, did you do this transaction so on and so forth and you say yes and they approve it so if that is a pattern so this is identifying pattern over time so these kind of operations cannot be done using micro batches so these are streaming analytics solutions so this is where you detect and act immediately and with WSO to Siddhi we have lots of extensions for geographical processing natural language processing and lots of small functions like math string manipulations regex matching so on and so forth so it can run on top of Apache Storm uh, on a distributed mode so you don't need to write Java code or anything specific to Apache Storm it just sit the you write the the queries we take care of distributing it and running on top of on top of Storm so now we know like what's happening we can we can act on real time now we should be able to predict the future and see the next level like if customer is looking at a bike and a head, uh, helmet maybe he wanted to like get a whole set of um, biking experience so we can give all the uh, we can give offers on that area so with WSO to machine learner capabilities we have the uh, uh, capacity to explore the data and build models on top of them so we use spark ml lib for this and we are also adding r and pmml support 
from the next release of machine learner, which is expected to release within this year or early next year. And when we build models on top of those, we can run those models to detect and act upon it based like with CEP, DAS, and ESP. So all the real time, all the current event flows can use those models and predict them. And with uh, the CEP, uh, basically the runtime part of uh, DAS, we can run R scripts. And also we have regression and anomaly detection models on top of that. And with the next release of uh, ML, we are also adding deep learning and natural language processing support, and we are like improving that even further. So this is the data exploration part. Like it gives you different clustering uh, solutions. You can just with, with sampled k-means kind of stuff. And when you get the results, it also shows you like the feature importance, uh, confusion matrix, ROC curves, so on and so forth. So it gives you a. Uh, this is a tool for the data analytics. So, so the, you can go and un understand, analyze the data, and build models on top of that. So now we looked at how we can collect the data, analyze the data, and now we have to communicate that. So how are we going to communicate that? The first form is very passive. OK, we just show all what you, like, like give you the overall picture of what is, what is happening. So that is with the dashboard support. So we have a dashboard where we can write customized gadgets and dashboards. We also provide uh, with D3 and Vega, we do a gadget generation tool as well. So you can customize a dashboard and basically create a gadget with few clicks. For example, like it initially gives you a tabular format of data uh, on the stream, on stream, or even in, in, in tables that is stored data. And then what you do is you go and select the bar type, like uh, the chart type. It can be bar, line, map, uh, arc, so on and so forth, table. Uh, and then you basically map the columns on the, on the t uh, tabular format to the x-axis, y-axis, and so on and so forth. So it will, it will basically plot and give you a basic graph on top of it. Which, you ha which we also have some support for drill down capabilities in certain scenarios. So this is how you can easily get to a table or a stream to a dashboard. So this is, this is, this is basic. It, you, it gives some sort of visualization, which is pretty much good enough for, for initial case, cases. But if you want to have very, very rich uh, gadgets, then you can, uh, of course, go and implement it. So we want to reduce the time of analyzing and Presenting, so that's why we have built this amazing tool for ga for gadget generation, which is quite useful when it comes to processing. So other than that, so that is passive. Now we have to be active. We have to uh, enforce systems to act when we identify and take decisions. So on predictive case and real time case, we have identified certain scenarios. Now we have to enforce the system to take that action and 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 do something about it. So on those cases, we can use. Uh, SOAP and REST protocol to invoke different services. It may be people process or data services, so on and so forth. And we also have a rich set of adapters, the same thing that we can receive. We can also push emails and notifications, SMS, alerts to other parties. We can push to the dashboard using WebSocket and REST. And then we also have ESB. We can push it to the ESB such that you can even tweet about it, so on and so forth. All social media kind of stuff can be done through that. And we also have support for RDBMS and Cassandra databases, so you can store those data for future analytics kind of stuff. So now we have the data. We, 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 we try to communicate it to outside, but sometimes you have to go beyond the boundaries. Like you might have mobile apps that you know f frequently come, or like time to time it comes and get uh, update uh, about the current situation, things like that. So in those cases, we can store the data into in, in the database and then use the data services server or the REST APIs of the analytics engine itself to expose the da uh, expose the data as APIs through the WSO2 API manager so that your system can be uh, secured. You can add billing, throttling, and so all of those features with the notifications. That's where we go beyond our boundaries. So we had an overall idea of like how we collect data, how we analyze them, and how we can communicate them to the outside. Now, if we look at how 
how, what's the developer experience of this? Like how they are going to build the solution on top of it, and how we are going to deploy that. So we have a, a event flow diagram that shows like okay how these events are going to flow to different systems, uh, such that you can understand uh, what's happening on each of those levels. We have event tracing capabilities like uh, how how events are converted, how it transform so on and so forth for debugging purposes. And you can also have a statistic level for per component level, how much events are generated at each level. And we have also a try it for Siddhi, for real time components, we can just write a query and try that out. We have simulation support, we have, you can just upload a file with certain, certain events where you can publish them, or you can even point to a database and playback events to test and simulate scenarios. And we also have a Spark console, so which, which allows you to interactively uh, run Spark queries and do batch processing on top of it. Data Explorer to understand the data and what you have. And also tooling support, which is uh, uh, primitive right now. We only have for real-time capabilities, but we are adding, we are improving this uh, after the current release. So with the tooling support now, we can build a complete one analytic archive, which has the capability of doing real time and batch analytics with the, with the appropriate dashboards, receivers, publishers, alerting capabilities. Everything you can build as a dashboard, a single archive, and you can deploy that. And we have uh, a minimum deployment of two nodes. So this is for the small and starting customers. And if you really want to scale it out, you can scale up to eight, 10 plus nodes based on the scalable requirements that you have. and Real-time uh, uh, distributed processing can also be done on Apache Storm. Uh, so this is also quite new for this release. So, so with the analytics platform, you can do ki kind of any kind of analytics you want. So it's, there's no restriction of this is what you can do. But based on the customer's feedback, we have identified certain scenarios that is like commonly used. So. On, the, on those cases, like for example, fraud analytics, so where we have some domain knowledge plus the data analytics server, we build a fraud analytics solution, so that's what we are working on. And we're also building one for IoT analytics, log analytics, and analytics for each WSO2 server specific to like that server uh, scenario. So each, like ESB has its own way of analyze, analyze, anal analyzing data, a message broker might have a different way of doing stuff. So we should be able to get analytics of, on that. So you might get some idea about the analytics part when Sanjeev was presenting the new vision. So there will be analytics for each of the products specifically. So this is basically like uh, giving <coughs> domain knowledge and building vertical solutions on top of the DAS. So so you get a basic idea of that. So apart from that, sometimes, OK, you as a data en engineer, you might have implemented some solution for that. For example, a simple case, you know, uh, you have implemented temperature monitoring solution. And if the temperature go around a boundary, now you send an alert. So if temperature is more than 35 degrees Celsius, you send an alert. But now your management comes and tells you, OK, I want to have the control of that. It may be sometimes 35, sometimes 40. I should be able to change that. And you may be looking at just five minutes, last 10 minutes. I also should be able to change those things. So they are asking more control over how alerts are generated, how, um, uh, how things are basically analyzed. So you can't ask them to go and learn Siddhi or Spark and do those changes. So it can't always come through uh, a process of uh, changing those stuff. So in those cases, we have built this uh, execution manager, which basically, like, you can build all your solution, template them, and you can give a form-based UI for them. So this form-based UI is automatically generated. So with the form-based UI, they can just go and tweak those values and change it. So this will give, you, give them an easy user experience to build your custom solutions and, and tweak this, those values. So, with all of those, we have certain use cases and case studies done so far. So uh, our customers are currently, like we have customers um, doing smart parking solutions, health and financial monitoring, smart city projects, vehicle tracking, building monitoring, railway monitoring, throttling and anomaly detection, API analytics, 
and connected cars. So these are some scenarios that we have worked with our customers so far. Uh, and we have also done case studies on uh, real-time SOC analytics. This is for the distributed event processing uh, uh, conference that we did uh, on 2013. So there was a nice video. You can just go and look at it. And TFL, that is London Traffic uh, Live Feed. So we did a dashboard which, which tracks the buses and how they behave. And you can draw geofences on top of that and take decisions on, on those. So I, I showed a demo, a brief demo on this at the uh, tutorial session. And smart meters uh, is one other scenario where we, it, it uses about uh, 200 sensors and 40 houses where we were able to process about 400k events per second. So this is some IoT kind of scenario. So this is what all we have. So if you want to get started, so you just go not need to download the data analytics server. If you are like, if you are interested in the whole thing, if you are only interested in real-time analytics, then go and get the WSO to complex event processor to do the real-time part. But that real-time part is also in the data analytics server. And if you want to build models and do predictive uh, stuff, then you can use the machine learning model. So there is, uh, uh, you can go to wso.com slash analytics. It's a microsite which gives you all detail about the three products and how they work together. And you can uh, see the success stories and resources, uh, webinars, so on and so forth, which will be very helpful for you to uh, start with the WSO2 analytics platform. And I have got a lot of questions uh, due, uh, during this course of uh, 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 conference, like on DAS and BAM. So what is new apart from DAM, BAM is the interactive and predictive an analysis, the common data abstraction layer. We have improved the performance with Spark and Siddhi. Uh, better dashboard than what we had previously. Distributed real-time processing support. Earlier, we didn't have a distributed real-time processing on top of Storm. So that is something new. And much simpler deployment models. Like earlier, we cannot do, uh, uh, with Hadoop, we couldn't do small deployments. Uh, so now it's much easier and simple for you to start with and scale based on the requirement. So, so that's all uh, I have. So the price of light is less than the cost of darkness. So invest something on, on, on analytics, so which gives you a lot and lot more. Thank you very much.